Welcome back to Virginia this morning. Our next guest says there are two types of happiness. Do you know what they are? Recently, Jessica spoke with an empowered advocate, empowerment advocate that is, and an author who shares some insights. Our next guest is the founder of the Girl Talk Network. It's one of the fastest growing female empowerment, transformational online and offline communities for women around the world. Today, she's going to share her insights on how to be happy. We welcome author and empowerment advocate, Sarah Pendrick to Virginia this morning. Sarah, a delight to see you. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. Well, we are happy to have you. So that's our conversation today, how to be happy. If only it were quite that simple. You've got some, some tips and thoughts and ideas to share with us today. Yeah, I'm excited. And if you're gonna take anything from today, it's knowing the two types of happiness. The first one is eudaimonic, which is one of the most if not the top one to remember, it's all about your well being. And the second one is hedonic, which is more of those fast, quick fixes that we reach for, whether it's like a candy bar or buying something. And eudaimonic is the everlasting happiness that often gets forgotten. So that's why I say to figure out everlast everlasting happiness is key. So yes, even just now being aware that there are those kind of multiple types of happiness, two types of happiness, you, you said it was eudodonic, which is the longer, longer lasting? Eudemonic, you which is your wellness, your everlasting happiness. How do we dive in and pinpoint this type of happiness? I mean, do we just know, is it something that we say that that's it? That's what always makes me happy. I wish it was that easy, but honestly, <laughs> like you said, just knowing that I know before I studied this and before I got my master's, I didn't even know there was different types of happiness. I personally was always reaching for the quick fixes, feeling down, feeling in a bad mood, like what's something that's really quick could just fix, fix me, grab the candy bar. And then we wonder like, oh, why, why did that only last five minutes? So being aware of the different types will put you ahead so much. So that's the good news. And the way that you really develop the eudaimonic happiness, I know it's a, it's a, it's a tough word to say and the spelling is even more <laughs> intense, but the way that you develop that is really honing in on what brings you joy in your life and doing a little of that every single day, two minutes a day, builds that everlasting happiness to where you're in a bad mood, you're able to get out of it quicker and it lasts. It doesn't just last for that one day. That's, it's important to then capitalize on that type of excitement and happiness so that you do seem fulfilled and, and you build it, you cultivate that. Exactly. How is two minutes a day gonna make a difference? And is this something then, Sarah, that lasts the whole day through? Can we expect that we wake up in the morning and today's a happy day? Or is this something that ebbs and flows? It ebbs and flows. And that's the thing that you give your girl, yourself grace for, that every single day isn't like, I'm in a, an amazing mood, but there's a difference between being a low energy and feeling down most of the day and having that eudaimonic happiness where you actually feel really, really, you could be in a bad mood, but you feel really fulfilled inside. So the reason that you do it two minutes a day is because it's something that you can actually keep up with. If I told you you had to do it an hour a day, how many people would really do that? So if you really just commit to two hours a day, you're actually showing love for yourself. And scientifically, your vibration is gonna rise and you're just gonna build and cultivate, like you said, that well-being inside to where you don't have to be in the best mood every single day, but you actually feel happiness no matter what you're going through. Sarah, I would imagine that there are uh, safe and healthy ways to make yourself feel happy. Do you have some good go-tos that are an easy way to start developing that two minutes a day that you yes, recommend? Yes, I do. Yeah, so one of my, two of my favorite things are just repeating thank you. Scientifically, you actually feel that energy in your body if you're just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. So every morning when you wake up, you could do this with your kids, you could do it with your partner, you could do it with yourself and just repeat thank you and you'll feel that vibration in your body. Also journaling and writing down the things that you're grateful for. And then for me, I love being in nature. So I make sure that I get my feet on the ground, whether it's the grass or the beach, wherever you live, at least for a few minutes a day and that as well just scientifically builds our wellness. Both incredibly approachable, great examples. You love being outside, go and spend those two minutes outside, make that time and see if you can find that connection. And I'm going to try the thank you, thank you, thank you, and just see how this builds. 
Yeah, it's it's it sounds interesting. Everyone always some people laugh when I tell them that, but then they're like, "Oh, I did what you said," and I could literally feel myself feeling that happiness inside. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sarah. We appreciate learning a little bit more about the science behind happiness and learning how to cultivate that. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. We'll share a little bit more information on Sarah. You can learn more about Sarah's Girl Talk Network or her new book, Beautifully Brave. We'll post a link on our show website by later today, wtvr.com slash VTM. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us, and we'll be right back.